Thanks for staying with us. So we're moving on to our hot topic of the day. So one of the topics we want to talk about is um, the issue of will, getting a will, especially when, um, when death is inevitable, you know, um, because we've seen where Nigerians, we've heard so many stories. Um, according to a handler, writing a will, especially in this part of the world, almost, is the almost non-existence. They insist that if you aren't interested in writing a will, then you f when, when you fall ill, especially when the doctor says the end is inevitable, mm. you should try to write a will just for the peace of mind of your family. But we find that Nigerians, especially Africans, we find it difficult to have these hard conversations with our loved ones. So, for example, the doctor says um, you have a terminal disease and you have four weeks or two weeks or one, one few months to, to go. And they tell you, as they tell in, in, in other Western countries, go and put your homes in order. But in Nigeria, we, we, find, we find faith, hope, trust, and believe in God that there can still be a turnaround. And because the whole family wants to be strong for that person, nobody wants to say, hey, uncle, this thing, can you begin to tell us what you want? Especially for those who are very wealthy, who have estates, who have land, home and abroad, and there's a lot of confusion, a lot of children, a lot of wives here and there. Mm -hmm. In that situation, why do we find it difficult to have that, that conversation of what do you want to do with your property after you leave? Mm -hmm. That's our conversation today. How do we begin to have this kind of tough decisions? You can call us on 081-270-53687, 0913907694. You can also send us messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to read your messages. And uh, I'd like to hear your experiences. I'm sure many of you have loved ones that, that, that have this happened to. A lady in particular was saying the experience. Her, her, her father, her mother obviously distraught. Her mother couldn't handle that conversation because her mother was broken, seeing her father sick on the bed. The end was obviously around the corner. They were praying, pastors were coming every day, fasting and hoping that there'll be a turnaround. But she knew that, listen, this might be the end. And she tried so hard mm. to stop the conversation with her we father. Mm. But she just couldn't bring herself mm. to it. And when the man now finally died, wow. chaos now started. Mm. Mm. So in your view, how do we overcome this huddle? Okay, right. so this thing reminds me of the story of King Hezekiah. And I just quickly went there. It says, in those days, Hezekiah became ill and was, at, and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, this is what the Lord says, put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. So a lot of the times also we find it among Christian believers who is like, you know, who have that belief of, I'm not going to die. Yeah, you right. shall not die. They will call pastors. People will be on their deathbeds. The doctor will come and call the family together and say, these are the last days, you know, come around yeah. your loved ones. But then you go ahead, call the pastor, and the pastor will come. I declare yeah. you shall not die. Yeah. You shall. So, you know, you're here at the bed, and you, they have just, the pastor has just declared you shall not die. Why then would you be having this conversation with me if it is not that you have my death? You know, yeah, so many people are afraid to have that conversation, but I think it will be the place of the older ones in the family, those who are of a certain age. But anyone should, but it's, it's hard for Nigerians to make that decision. And I understand how a younger one having that discussion with a father or a mother will be, oh, this one has been waiting for me to die so she can inherit my property. But there are uncles and aunties and friends of a certain age. We know that we're, you know, you're going somewhere. May our end be, you know, better than, uh, you know, things like yeah. that. They should be able to have that conversation. That's on one hand about those that have that conversation with us. But secondly, we must tell ourselves the truth. All of us here, nobody came from heaven or just appeared. We were born. There's a process. We were born of a woman and we're here, every one of us. And every one of us will pass on one day, whether we like it or not. Mm. That's just life's process. And you, when you were being born, your parents did all they could. They made sure they cleared the house for you. They bought food for you. They bought clothes for you. They arranged and prepared for you. Now you're leaving some people behind. 
do the needful, mm. prepare to for, for them. them so that mm. when you leave, it will be such a glorious living. Fantastic. When you can do it, do it. And sometimes you don't have to wait until you're on your sick bed. So it doesn't seem ominous, like, oh, okay, yeah. this I'm yeah. sick and this may mean death. Yeah. It could even be in your most happy, yeah. your birthdays. Right. Okay, today is my birthday. I'm putting this aside. I'm putting this aside. Right. You know, who knows? The next birthday, I may get to put another thing aside right. for you. But Let's think about see, that way. So this, this conversation, how, how do family members go about it? Yeah, so I, I think is a change of we need a change of mindset um we we take especially in this part of the world we take death so seriously like don't even joke with it don't even give an example with death and use your name you say my enemy my, yeah. where else are you running from you will die i will die everybody will die we don't have to wait till death comes knocking before you put your house in order it can happen. You can go to work and you don't get back home. You can have an accident. Anything can happen. So if you have a free mindset that as I'm making this money, as I'm putting my assets together, let me start, you know, securing my family because anything can happen. It doesn't mean that you will um, outlive people that um, don't make any plan or they will outlive you if you make a plan or not. Mm. It doesn't mean anything. We don't know our expiry date on earth. Nobody remembers. We, we, we came with it. We know at some point, so so and so date, it will happen. But we can't remember right now. You don't know when you're going to die. I don't know when I'm going to die. So why do I have to wait till I'm already on the deathbed? So people who are smart, who are wise, who are not selfish, there's another selfish part I say in it because even sometimes those people who are dying on the bed do not want to even share what they have. They know they are going. They are not believing anymore. They know. There are, there are signs already that you are out the door. You know already you're going. But they still do not want to release what they have, you know. But if you have an open mind of selflessness, you want to cater for the people who are your loved ones, mm. you would begin to make plans. You don't have to wait. In your 30s, as you are buying that first land, you are buying in somebody's name, you are protecting somebody right. because so, anything can happen. So it's, I think it's just a change of mindset. Right. If we begin to see death, differently, right. it will help us make this so, plans. So, you know, I want you to take it from the part of faith, because there, there, are, two, there are two sides. There are those who prepare, or with the, what, what she just said, that admonishing, admonishing those who are young or whatever age, prepare. I want us to go specifically to somebody who knows, like, you are on that deathbed, or you're, 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 you know, the doctor has told you you have this you're amount going. of weeks left, or months, or even a year left, and you have an opportunity to put your house in order, but you choose not to because you want to activate faith. Because you want to trust that God will heal Do you something. from this bed. I'm going to stand up. So you don't want to even phantom the idea that I'm going to go. You want to tell the doctor that you are the one that's <laughs> with that, <laughs> not me. I will show you the God that I have. Mm. And God will oh, show you. Good. So because of that, you don't think of death. And that's the real conversation. So in that situation, when we look at other cultures where when the doctor tells them, this is it all, anybody knows what to do. But why do we Africans have that difficulty in, in, in taking the next steps in these situations? There's no better way to say it. It's an emotional period to, to be told that you, you leave, or to even not be told, because not all of us get the opportunity, not all those who have died anyway, not all of us will also get the opportunity to be on a dead bed and have the opportunity to put things in order. Yes. That can be sudden for blessing. some people. It was sudden from my own experience. <clears throat> and it's just the constant thinking that there's an end to life, you know. And to be in that place can be overwhelming for some people. Yeah. For me, it's so, it's, <clears throat> I remember when my father would call me every time and say, Nima, if I die, bury me where I die. This and, that. and those kind of conversations. At some point, I said, please, 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 if I come to this house and you're telling me this, I won't come again. So for me, it was an emotional difficulty but when the reality happened mm. I then kept flashing back and so it's not something that somebody would easily accept mm. that you think that you might not see someone again or that you think that you would you are the, the one in that place there are a lot of denials that would happen at that point what assists people is to already have it planned Before that, that if it just happens what if this happens I usually think of my children they're young, they're vulnerable, what will happen? So I think for most people, that's what the thought should be about. And then if you had any unfinished, because of Muslims, you need to declare any debt that you're owing. You don't want to die and be paying debts with your good deeds. Mm. So for Muslims, we need to talk about debts mm. that you're owing. My dad passed the card, ATM card to my brother and said, this pin, 
and my brother said, I already have the pin. He said, no, just re remember the other one, you know, just in case. And I was saying, are you dying? Mm -hmm. I was still in denial of that, that, you know, you're not dying. And then it happened in two days. So sometimes it's a, it's an overwhelming period for both parties, whether you are going to outlive or, or to accept but that someone... But should we have the conversation, even when it's emotionally the overwhelming? The conversation is for when you're healthy, mm, yeah. when you're upright. Mm. What, what I see from, from law practice is that I saw is that a father on his deathbed was so angry because, you know, some of his children were not available, he, he, he disowned them. And it was a custom those days. The confusion that thing caused has outlived him 30 years now. Mm. Mm. Because I'm, I was saying to them that if I'm sure if he was alive, he would not want this confusion among Dirty, his five children. Yeah, but there's a confusion now, over 30 years now, that has outlived him. So it's not a decision you make when you're facing finality, no. Mm. It's a decision you make when you're clear Daily. and wealth, when you're investing, yes. just yeah. as you said, as you're buying the land, be thinking, okay, if I don't finish this land, just yesterday my landlord was saying to me that you people are the Muslims, so, and you have not brought my contract. You know, he's, he's asking, he was saying to me that, don't you think that if I'm not here, some people will give you a problem with this property that you, know, you just acquired? So sometimes it's important that when you're sane, when you're calm, when you're collected, is when you put these things in order, yeah. not in that final moment. That final moment, any emotion can be truncated, okay. running through your head. Yeah. You might be concerned about the vulnerable yeah. and you know, less concerned about the person that might truly, truly right. be there right. for you. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll get a few calls and messages. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Yeah. Thanks for staying with us. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Excuse me. This is Ginger's. Take a small smoke. <coughs> so, <coughs> one of the reasons why we wanted to talk about this um, was a story I heard about a professor, a very popular professor in Nigeria. And um, he had cancer, um, but he wasn't sure what stage and all that. And um, he traveled abroad, I think, to Germany to see his doctor. And his doctor had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that you only have about two months mm. or less. That, in fact, you better start going back to Nigeria right away. If not, you start breaking down. So the moment he got back home, the first thing he did, paid for his caskets, wrote down exactly the plan, put together a, a planning committee for his funeral, um, the, the, um, put together, a, um, re, re, went back to his will, mm -hmm. updated, reviewed his will, made sure everything was in order. So by the time he passed on, Everything was already laid down mm. smooth and easy. Like now, that, that was not like a lesson to many people that, okay, this man had the opportunity. Not everybody has that opportunity. Mm -hmm. He had the opportunity to know that the end is near. But, but the average person wouldn't want to accept that reality mm -hmm. and would believe that God can do a miracle. So that, come that, here. That, that I'm not going to die. I'm still going to live. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the real issue I want to also tackle. That how do we put faith in what, one compartment yeah. and also reality in another quickly, compartment. Miriam, yeah. The Sierra Leonean that brought the Ebola virus here was, was diagnosed of Ebola. He saw that it was a terminal point. What he did was come here, try to get to TB Joshua's church for healing. Okay. People sometimes, when, when, it is yes. even, when it is even dangerous for you to go, mm. you will still go mm -hmm. in the hope that you get help. Yeah. Yes, so, I, so I just wanted to say that also people need to look at the fact that when you get to celebrate your birthdays into your old age, that's a miracle mm, and so. a blessing on its own. My father died before he turned 30. Mm. And the saddest thing, every time I'm told the story, he died in an accident and they said one of the last things he kept saying was that I don't want to die. Mm. So that's what <clears throat> sometimes I remember of him. But when you have someone that they can even get the opportunity to be told mm. your time is coming, go and put your house in order. So that means you've even lived long enough, you've worked hard enough, you've put some things aside. Just look at that already as, as a blessing. blessing and as a miracle. God mm. has done so much for you. When we see that and understand that, that many people do not have that. My father, in his young days, he had a house, you know, a few things. We didn't get any of that. Mm. Of course, he was not expecting to be driving on that particular day and be in an accident and die and leave a woman with two children. We didn't get anything. My mother had to start from the scratch. Gosh. So when you have that, you're celebrating your 50th, your 60th. Understand that God has already blessed yes, you. Yes. Mm. And then show that blessing in one way or the other towards your family. So just mm -hmm. ease it. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that it will even, you know, one thing with this, um, it's not that it will make life um, <coughs> fantastic forever for them, but 
it shows a selflessness. Yes. I understand, you know, that I'm leaving. Let me help, you know. Yes. And I know that many people who would have passed, and I believe that my father would be looking and thinking, I wish I could do this for my children. Yeah. For many years as a child, I dreamt of my father every day. He visited me in my dreams every day. Mm. And, you know, there are things he would never be able to do in the physical for me. And so now that you're here, able to do something for your family in the physical, mm. do it. Just do it. Let me take yes. this yeah. comment. There's yeah. also um, an aspect that people don't like to say out loud, which is some people don't want to share. <laughs> yes. The they nature. don't want, it's their nature. They don't, all the money they are making, they want to eat it. Where I stop, I stop. Where I go, I go. <laughs> so if, if that is right your too. case, and if they are right too. But if that is your case, let your family know. Don't hide under you don't want. Do you wish me dead? Are you wishing me dead? And then you, you want to kill me? I don't write to you. Tell them I want to eat my money so that they leave you alone and go and find theirs. Where I find it painful is when you have little ones coming up. Mm. There are some men who have trained their children. Everybody's a graduate. They've sorted them. And they feel, okay, the money I've made, I'm going to eat as much as I can eat. And when I go, whatever, however they want to share it, that's fine. Whoever gets what, that's fine. And they leave, that's okay. But when you have little children, you need to start paying attention. At an early age, is, you don't have to wait because you really don't know when yes. the, the trumpet will you know, sound. sound and you will leave on your way to work or your way back or anything can happen. Jesus you really don't Christ. know. So you start making that plan. And with everything people experience around you, even if you were not thinking about it, you have seen this person's father die and you saw how the children struggled. Do you wish that for your own children mm. if you still have children? So pay attention and start putting things down. Right. Some also have this fear of, if I now go before my wife, I'll now leave something for her. She will take it and give I it to mean, another man. That's another issue why they don't leave anything. They, they'll feel, my children will survive. After all, I grew up surviving. There was no, right. pro, nobody handed properties down to me. Right. So we need to understand some of these mindsets. What I advise is start having these sort of conversations early. Like, um, and it's not only about property and money. Even how you want to be buried, even mm. how you want your family members to divide themselves. So my father has told me already that um, he's a chief, which I know will give us problems when he dies <laughs> because they want me to perform some right. I'm the other. I can't dodge it. But he has told me that uh, he wants to be buried in church. They should just sing hymns for him, simple burial, anything I have to. Instead of buying those cows, I should be giving him the money now. I should make sure he eats it now, which I'm already doing. Yeah. But I still need him to put it in writing, which yeah. he has refused to do. Hmm. Because if he does not put it in writing, I'm Come speaking right English. When I get too. there on yeah, that day, yeah. they will stress me. Yeah, right, they will right. stress me very well. <laughs> so, and on the other hand, I have my father-in-law, who don't, he's a lawyer, mm. but he doesn't want to have this conversation. There are issues already that yeah. we already seen yeah. will come up when he dies. Daddy, sit down, have this conversation. He doesn't want to have it. His son is afraid to ask him to have the conversation. I'm yeah. just looking at them. It's not that, an that, easy that's conversation that's to have. Just have. Just looking at them. We have to wrap up on this, but let us take a few minutes. I wanted to take this, this yes. um, person, uh, person's tweet. Ngo, Ugo man, uh, Fiona says, my father had a will. He told me about it. Even when he made adjustments from time to time, but my father died suddenly. Mm. He was murdered, and I saw a lawyer say, no, we will. Hey, things happen in Nigeria, Sha. Yeah, this is, this is the, and things we've like heard that. though. This is the worst case. And banks too. <laughs> Secret accounts. <laughs> banks that become millionaires over people's um, uh, okay. discreet or yeah. secret yeah. accounts. Yeah. You know, these things happen. They're truly, truly everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing to do is to keep a list of what you own. And find at least, if you cannot find one person, Find uh, two, three people, if not among your children, relatives that you let know these things. People who you know that they are secure mm. in their own space, not the yeah. people that are waiting. Ah, mm. Let him just fall and die. Let hungry, me convert yeah. it. Lawyers do these things, and I know a lot of comments have come before the disciplinary I, committee I, on this. Let me take this call from Princess. Good morning, Princess. Are you there? This is our Princess. Mariah and the ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, guys look good. Uh, my name is Princess Aborara. I'm calling from Abuja. You're live. Go so ahead. Please. I have been I've been following and four women talking and I've been hoping to hear or have a conversation around a woman also writing a will. We are human beings. Women we don't are us. asking for emancipation and, and to be free and to be treated equally, just the way the men are treated. At this point, I always, you know, talk, talk to women about this, and this time I come up with this conversation, they have a problem 
they don't want to talk about it because it is it is always centered around the man's property, the man's mm -hmm. money, the man's houses, his land, his this. I am from a polygamous home, mm -hmm. and even though my father didn't say, I want to believe with my level of experience right now that what he planned to achieve, he actually did, which means set every child up, make sure they are comfortable enough, equip them with all the knowledge they need to survive, mm. give them good education, not expensive education, good education, mm. not expensive education, and then make sure that you give them the right morals, let them understand the, the, the beautiful things of life, and make mm. them also understand that some of these things you want to have, you cannot have them because you don't need them. Now, that aside, I want, um, I like the fact that a lot of, you know, a lot of aspects have been touched by all four of you. Fantastic. I particularly like what, um, is it Uju or Ada, I'm trying to remember her name now. This is what this is said. And here's something. I have three. Oh, princess. I really wanted to hear her. Mm. So I guess she was talking to the fact that when we talk about this is your will, we always almost subconsciously refer to the fathers, the husbands. So she's saying that women also do have wills. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. the conversation is, mm -hmm. is across the board. The point is that man or woman, we should That's be willing at some point to better. have a conversation. Yeah. I think I've shared this story because I know a family mm -hmm. where the man is alive. He shared his will already to his children. Everybody mm -hmm. has gotten what they want. Mm. He's only living off what he has right now. But mm. everything has been shared. shared. There's Life no child that can say that. Mm. Everybody got their own property. Mm. And he's still doing well where, where he is. So and the point is that... I, we're going to wrap up on this conversation. The point is, yes, we have, we have faith in God. Mm. We believe that we, we, we trust God for a miracle at every stage. Because the truth is that on your dying bed, God can still heal you. Absolutely. But we're saying that even with that faith, when you have an opportunity, when you are blessed, based on what Miriam said, to have an opportunity where you know that, based on science, the time is near. It's a blessing to say, you know what, this is what I want to do. I'll make things easier for those coming after you. you and if you do survive it, hallelujah, praise yeah. the Lord. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, at least your family is happy that something was done properly before you left. I think that's really the summation of mm -hmm. this conversation. Let's go back on a break. When you come back, we'll come back with something very interesting and uh, Friday-worthy. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.